Hello, welcome to Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. And happy Friday. Here we are at Seeker Speak, and we're having a live chat today with uh, someone I've been so excited to come on all week. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited till Friday. And we have today alien expert, author, and Hollywood, blockbuster Hollywood, uh, uh, casting director, Emmy nominated, say that three times, Craig Camp Abasso. And let me, let me bring him on. Hey, Craig. Hey, hi, Tamara. How are you? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> so, look, I wanted to talk a little bit about your background. I mean, and then I know that we, we just did a show uh, recently, and I'm going to make sure I put on the chat so we have uh, comments and people can start asking their alien questions. Sure. So, um, so you have uh, a, pro, a what is it, extensive background with far as uh, getting in, in the entertainment industry as early as 15. Of course, you said it was with yes. your McDonald's chicken sandwich. Who knew? I'm going to look Who at it. <laughs> I, I was I was the first national commercial for McDonald's chicken sandwich, but it was there. They were unveiling it to the world. Now, it aired in every state except for it aired in California, except Los Angeles, where I live. So everyone saw it except for me, and I cannot find it anywhere on the internet. So I've never seen it. You got to be kidding me! It's not yeah, anywhere no, you can find. No, no. no. So oh, anyway, man. yeah. So now you've also, and I want to talk about uh, tonight. We've got a few things I want us to talk about, and then I want to get into the nitty gritty of some more sure. alien species. But I know that you just finished. I know you have this massive career in the in the movie industry, working with such greats as with David Lynch, with Dune, uh, incredible series, Arnold Schwarzenegger with uh, the, the Destroyer and Total Recall, as well as Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories. Well, that was so fun. I used to love to watch that. And, uh, uh, yeah, that was fun. So much fun. That was a great show to work on. Every yeah, week, uh, every week, a different cast, a different director, and they were always huge directors or they were celebrity directors. Oh, so, wow. yeah, I mean, we had Burt Reynolds directing one week and uh, Kevin Costner being in an episode the next and uh, Haley Mills flying in from England to star in an episode. Oh, and I mean, just it was so much fun. Can't even tell you how fun oh, it wow. was. Yeah, we've, already, we've got people popping up in the chat. So uh, Clay here and it's Fiona from the Portal of uh, Alchemy. She's a little star seed. There's a bunch popping in tonight. Oh, uh, hi, Fiona. <laughs> yeah, she's from South Africa. So it is late. She wants to see you because it's midnight uh, over there. God bless you, Fiona. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You will not be disappointed. Let me tell you why. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, Craig is a wonderful. So, um, and I want to talk about, and I know you have a new book out, which is, uh, I've got a, uh, an image of it here. I want to show everybody and let me go here. Um, and so I can show everybody what this looks like. Cause it's a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful cover. I don't know if you had anything to do with that. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. Actually one of, uh, the publisher, uh, they have an artist within the publishing house and she created that, lo and behold, uh, and they surprised me with that cover. And her name is Catherine Sky Peck. And, and when I saw it, I just went, whoa, what a, what a great, shocking cover. <laughs> and I was like, you know, because when I look at books and, and, and I'm walking in a bookstore, I look at covers and color. Okay. That's that's what attracts me to a book. And if I saw that sitting on a bookshelf in Barnes and Noble, which it is, by the way, they are in Barnes and Noble stores. Ooh. So good. I'm so yeah. excited. That is good. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. And um, I said, man, I would pick that book up. And after I flipped through it and saw all the painstaking artwork and Real oh, life photographs weird. of extraterrestrials uh, and different things. I, I said I would, I would go and I would purchase that book. Not know even if I didn't even know who the author was because it's just so right. fascinating. So, 
Well, it is, I mean, it really is a beautiful cover. And I'll, I I mean, it's so powerful, even the wording, the extraterrestrial species almanac, the ultimate guide to grays, reptilians, hybrids, and Nordics. But that's not all. There's 82 that you've listed. And of course, you said right. there's a parade more, you know, of different species, but there's there 82. is. There's 82. I, I, I had, uh, because of uh, the publisher, I had to keep the book under 300 pages. And so, I uh, was listening to Paul Hellyer, the former Canadian Minister of Defense, who speaks all the time about how extraterrestrials exist. He knows it. He was there. He's seen it. And the last interview he gave, he talked about 82 races that he knew of. And I thought, well, I'm going to honor Mr. Hellyer and do 82 races, and let's see if it fits within the confines of under 300 pages. And boy, I just made it. I had to cut a few pages yeah. out of some of the stuff in the end. In the back of the book, I also had a whole section on dimensions, all like 12 dimensions and what's oh, in wow. each. And so I had to cut that whole section and had to cut a few other things down, but I was able to get the 82 races in there. So, wow. well, I tell you what, I, I bought the Kindle version and, yeah. and I also got his other, his whole saga of, of other I Am Thyron. So we'll talk about that. But sure. I do want to make a comment about this particular book. It is deep. I mean, it goes through as beautiful illustrations per each one. Like you get to see everyone, what they look like, what their intention, what their technological advances are, what their viewpoint is, how they operate. And it's, it was, uh, it's extremely detailed. I was surprised. I mean, it is. It, it expanded my mind. I told you that yes. something happened to my brain yeah. after it wasn't just fluff. It was like, it was not what I expected. It was impressive. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a good book guys. And if you want, yes. I'm just going to, I'm going to plug you real quick just right. because I don't want to, and we're going to do it at the end too, but guys don't buy it on Amazon. I am going to get my copy where I am going to do that and get my signed copy, but you can go to, don't go to Amazon. If you want a hard copy, go to www autobiography of an et.com and then craig will give you a signed personalized copy copy that's right you just yeah. click on in the upper uh, bar it says other books click mm -hmm. on other books and then you can order it there and uh, and then i sign it you know to uh whoever to tamara and then i'll give you a little encryption yes. and yeah. sign it for you so okay. and I'm yeah you, look at this i got a personal note Look at this from, uh, here it is, uh, which we'll talk about these things too. And then I also want to talk about your other books and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, yeah. But I got a very nice personal uh, message uh, from Craig Camposo. And Campo I got this. Basso. Campo Campo Basso. Basso. Campo Basso. There you Basso. go. And I got to do it with the accent. <laughs> Campo Basso. Campo Basso. <laughs> do you want some cheese? Campo Basso. <laughs> and so tell them about these cool little groovy things. So those are the Universal Seal uh, protection cards. Uh, they are also on the same page as other books. Uh, you just scroll to the bottom of the page if anybody's interested. Uh, and what those are is uh, there are three overlapping M's. For the, yes, for the Divine M Trinity. The Cobalt Blue is for Archangel Michael. The Gold is for the Arch Archangel Metatron. And the silver is for Father Melchizedek, who is the architect of Melchizedek, which is the uh, universe's university school for all beings. And we all go through the University of Melchizedek. Every planet's a school. We go through there. We decide what we're going to learn next. We might go to school there for a while and that kind of thing. We'll get into more when we talk mm -hmm. about the Tehran books, uh, mm -hmm. um, about the university planets there and uh, what Tehran's function is uh, with star seeds and all mm -hmm. of that. So we'll get into that when we talk okay. about that later. Yeah. Okay, and you want to do that later? Okay. That's yeah, yeah, we on. can, yeah. We'll do yeah. it at the end. Okay. We'll do it at the end okay. and um, uh, that type of thing. So, yeah. So let's last time we didn't talk about you had an uh, again, you've written this these other series of saga with I am Thyron, and there's several of those. There's four of those. 
But I want to talk about your, you know, we're, we can talk more about your career and your findings and so forth and also your spiritual journey. But I want to hear the story about how you found your biological father and the shot that you found he was also involved with this UFO research. Yeah, I strangely enough, when I was 12 years old, my mom uh, sat me down and said that my father was my stepfather and that I had a biological father. Um, and uh, uh, so I had only known my father as my father, so I still have never thought of him as anything but. Um, they're both gone now and have been for some time. But uh, so when the internet came about, I decided to just type his name in, see if I could find him. Uh, found some people with that name, but nothing happened. So um, anyway, uh, flash forward to 2019, and I am writing this book, right? Wow. I'm getting getting ready to uh, start writing, and uh, and I get a phone call from a genealogist in Canada. And she wants to know some information. She said that we were cousins on uh, my mother's father's side, third, I think it was fourth or fifth cousins. And she wanted some info, which I gave her. And then I asked her, I said, well, you're a real life genealogist. Could you help me find my biological father? She goes, yeah, I can find anyone. So about six months later, she sent me an email and in the email, she said, I found him. He did pass away in 2006, and this is where he's buried. Wow. So I uh, emailed her back, thanked her, and, and said, I'm going to the cemetery in the morning. So I went immediately to the front desk when they opened, and I said, when they brought uh, this man in, Frederick Warner Vero, what, um, who... Do, uh, do you have a name of the person that called? And they said, well, let me look. And uh, they said, well, we do have a name of a man, uh, but we we don't have any information for him. I said, well, I'll take the name. And he had a different last name. So I went and visited uh, my biological father's crypt because he was cremated and uh, passed a, a, a ton of movie stars because he's buried at Forest Lawn right across from Warner Brothers. So I passed Betty Davis, Liberace, oh, yeah. all these huge movie stars. And I was like, well, okay, well, at least biological pop, you're, you're in a good company, right? <laughs> so, um, so I came home, I looked the man up. He lived literally around the corner from me. And it did have his address. So I wrote him a letter and I stuck my picture in there. And I said, if you know any of his family members, can you forward this on? Uh, two days later, I got a e uh, phone call from his son. And he said, my dad got your letter. And I said, oh, was your dad uh, friends with uh, Fred? And he said, no, it's actually his half brother. And I said, oh, so you're my cousin. And he went, oh, yeah, I guess I am. And he said, normally one would think that this is extremely weird and, and, and we probably wouldn't answer a letter like this, but you're a dead ringer for your father. Wow. And, really? he said, like, uh, and I said, well, I don't know. I, I, I only saw a picture when I was young and and it, it vanished over time. I don't know what happened to it. So anyway, um, so I, uh, I made plans to meet him and his dad for dinner. And I did. And, you know, you never know what to expect in these kind of things. And mm -hmm. They were so warm and inviting, and my uncle just kept staring at me. Oh, my God, you look just like him. Oh, my God, oh, my God. And he just had this perpetual smile. Because I can imagine for them, yeah. this is his brother, and it looks like he's yeah. sitting in front of his brother. Wow. Because I guess I, I – and so when they did give me all the pictures throughout life, I really did look like him. How did right. it feel so, to see it? Um, it was great. It was great. It was really, really exciting. So, so I just said, just tell me everything about him. So, 
So for three hours, they were um, just giving me all this wonderful information. Of course, I came home and I typed everything I could remember so I wouldn't yeah. forget. Good idea. And, um, uh, and about an hour into the dinner, uh, uh, my uncle said, uh, so your father wanted to get into the air guard and he was too young. So he begged our mother to sign a piece of paper to let him in. And my mother signed the paper. He went into the air guard. Um, and, and he met, he kind of looked 15, 16, because I have pictures of him uh, in the air guard, right? Really? So, Did you look yeah. young when you were really young? Did you look I, young? I looked, I looked more like him when he became around, when we were both about age 18. We were identical except for a slight difference in the nose. Okay. I mean, literally identical. So, yeah, the photo? Um, I have a photo of him, but oh, I can probably bring one up on my phone. Um, as okay. I'm talk as I'm talking, I'll try and do I'll try and find okay. the one of me sure. as well. So yeah. uh anyway, oh, so you mean uh, you two at the same age. You should do the same, Photoshop. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I know I actually should do something like oh, that. Or send it to know? me. I'm good at Photoshop. I'll do it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I will. Uh so so anyway, he said when he was 18, they put him in the Air Force and he went into intelligence and um, and he said, oh, and by the way, uh, he was in that Project Blue Book. I cannot believe this. this and, I, and, I, and I literally, my jaw dropped and I said, what? And he said, yes, he was in that Project Blue Book. And I said, do you even know what that is? And he said, well, kind of. And, <laughs> and I explained to him um, uh, what it was because it, it basically it's, uh, it's the Air Force's study on UFOs that started in 1952 and was decommissioned around January of 1970. They investigated over 11,000 sightings. And its main study was to determine if UFOs were a threat to national security and to scientifically analyze UFO related data. And now here I am writing a book for MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, yeah. that is a US based nonprofit of civilian volunteers who basically do the same thing. Right. right. So I just thought, wow, that just blew me away. And uh, OK, good. I found it. Let's see. Here we go. Then let me I'm going to I'm going to hold them both up for everyone. Oh, you got OK. All right. There is. So this is the oh, bi my, my biological. OK. Father. Wow. Your nose is a little different. That's about it. All right, hold that, it up. And oh, look at me. you. And that's. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. An awful lot. Yeah. Boy, that's, hard, that's hard wow. to do. That's hard to judge. Well, I, well <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, you can tell, but right. you don't, even not even, not even you're younger. Uh, you kind of look like Leaf Garrett there. Yeah, I got that a lot when I, <laughs> when I was really? a kid. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm like sporting my, you know, late 70s, yeah, yeah, 80s yeah, tonight. Yeah. So I know, kind of I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, the the similarities didn't end there because I, I you know, my uncle said, well, when, when he decided to leave the Air Force, he came back to L.A. And um, uh, he... Uh, a friend of his introduced him into IATSE, the union, and he ultimately became the head of construction at Warner Brothers Studios, building sets for movies and television. I just and can't here, even believe this. <laughs> and here I am casting movies for over 30 years and in the UFO field at the same time. And then he was there for years and years and years. My uncle said he worked so hard there that they gave him a trailer and he slept in the trailer overnight. So he didn't have to go home because he had so much work. So when he left, so when he left there, he opened up his own scenic shop uh, much later in life and built sets for the Hollywood Bowl 
and then designed and built sets or just built sets for Michael Jackson, Elton John, Neil Diamond, Alice Cooper. Um, he even did the sets for that famous Bing Crosby Christmas special with David Bowie. So, I mean, it's just amazing to just see the similarities. And by the way, him and his wife lived out by me when I was living out here. And my uncle has always no lived around the way. corner from me for over 30 years. That's how close they were to me. That is just nuts. And so all this time, it's so funny. It's like you're, you're parallel, but you're missing one another. So uh, when did he end up passing? When did you find out? about that well he passed in 2006 okay yeah do you feel him around you i do i do and how could, he, um, how could he not be you're like twin flames how could he not be yeah i mean uh actually i've uh we were doing a evp session inside the integratron because the energy is so strong there oh, right. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, upstairs. Uh, we had it for the day. I know the owners. And while we were doing it and um, uh, and talking to some of the people that other people wanted to talk to, I could feel him there. And I, I, and so I said, I can feel you here, Fred, way in the background. Can you step wow. forward and speak? And immediately in a class A EVP, which I have on tape, he said, much appreciated. And then, and then another friend of mine said, that's pretty amazing that you were a part of uh, Project Blue Book. And he went, yes, sir. Just like that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then oh. I asked him a few other questions that he answered as well. So, um oh. Yeah, it was amazing, but That's I do beautiful. feel them around. That's the one thing is when when you become activated and when you start moving towards becoming fully conscious and you start using your your heart to rule your mind, you become very um, empathic. And so I, I know when uh, either of my two dads or my mom or when another person on the other side comes around to visit um, uh, just to say hi. And sometimes my yeah. friends will say, okay, I'm not like you, but I felt your mother come to me this morning to say hello. And I said, yes, that would be exactly what she would do. Wow. And yeah. so were they, when did your parents separate now that we're getting, because um, uh, was it? Well, they, they. Dead? They weren't uh, really together that long because after she became pregnant, she found out that he was already married with the kid. And so she, she, put it, <laughs> she, put it, she put an immediate end to it. Right. And that was it. Now, I, I can't figure out in the timeline if he was separated from his wife and, and not sure if my mother knew that or what, mm -hmm. because now getting the other side of the story from the other side of the family who not, who knew nothing about me, right? Like my, my cousin said, me and my brother tried to get out of him all the time, UFO secrets, and he wouldn't talk. And I said, well, he was really good at keeping secrets. Look, he kept the secret about me, right? And they were like, yeah, you're right. From, it, from so, his other family, which is who you met, which was the brother. Right. Right. Still, his, his, his biological brother. Do you still yes. see your uncle or? Yes. Yeah. I just talked to him the other night. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. It's like uh, I talk to them, yeah. I talk to them all the time. And, and I have a stepbrother and two stepsisters that are older than me. And they, they flew out to meet me back at the end of 2019 before crazy COVID you know, slapped us in the face the following year. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so this probably the, the, not that, you know, but the isolation of being at home has probably helped you with um, par promoting your book because doing things like this, I would imagine. Well, I do a lot of work from home anyway, mm -hmm. um, okay. even being in the film industry. Um, 
a lot of my work can be done online. And then if we have physical casting, we can do that. But, but during COVID, casting all happens online and okay. that, that type of thing. So it. yeah, it just became a whole different medium. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to go back to the way it was, even yeah. when COVID is over. I'm not sure because people are right. so used to everything now. Yeah, it's kind of nice. You get you yeah. can accomplish more and it saves money getting on a plane yeah. here and there and only when it's necessary. So I, I think it's kind of a, a kind of a good thing. I think so many people were frightened to try this and then right. now they're like, oh, yeah, they're used to it. So because yes. it's just what we had to kind of move into. Right. So uh, that that is so wild about your dad. Is there, I'm curious before we go on, is there anyone else in the family that's interested in UFOs or in the entertainment industry? No, uh, my sister works in the entertainment industry, um, but our family was not in the entertainment industry. I mean, when I was 15, mm -hmm. we sort of lucked out by meeting. Uh, my mom met somebody that knew somebody that got me into a commercial agency. And so I was auditioning for commercials. Um, and then I graduated out of high school at age 17, moved out of my parents' house at that age and was working two jobs and, and, uh, going to acting school and going on auditions. Mm -hmm. But then, um, then I got a job at a teaser trailer house, uh, and learned a lot about filmmaking there and about making featurettes and teasers and trailers. And they did all of the big studios things. So when I was young, I was, I was going to all the studios. I was meeting a lot of, um, studio execs and, and I was going to places like Barbara Streisand's house to bring her stuff because they were shooting stuff with her. And I would, you know, I got to meet her. She answered the door and, oh, hi, come on in. And, you know, things like that. So there was a lot of, uh, and, and my boss had the best Hollywood parties ever. <laughs> Everybody and anybody who was around, I mean, these parties were chalk filled with like the young Richard Gere, Bridget Bardot, Raquel oh, Welch, um, oh, gosh. Dolly Parton. I mean, I can't even remember them all. Oh, there was no, those, those are De Niro, good party. De Niro, just tons of people. So I met lots mm. of people when I was young. But because I'm the one that set up those parties and my boss usually would just get a place at the hotel across the street because when he was tired of the party, he'd go to the hotel because every there would be always hangers, honors until like 6 a.m., right? And um, so uh, a lot of people thought at, towards the end that I was giving the parties. Well, you kind of right? directly. I mean, you picked and out directly, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was so much fun. It was oh, so wow. much fun. Those were really like, good. Yeah, I mean, really, really like, good time. Yeah, but when everybody was younger in their heyday, and it yeah. almost sounds like the Hugh Hefner parties, <laughs> minus the Playboy Bunny. It was. It was. Yeah, without with without the nudity. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Well, if that happened, that was that that was that was right, later on. Right. Nobody knew. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's crazy. Well, um. Let's see. Let's move on. I want to get some questions, too, about if anyone has any questions. Uh, we have people from all over the globe here um, right. at, from Australia, different places. And uh, um, uh, Susan, tell me tell me again where you're from. Write that into the chat. But if you have any questions for Craig, now is a good time to ask. I have a question and you may not be able to answer it, but it's just kind of in, in my head. I have heard, especially in the near-death experience community, that a lot of near-death experiencers also have had experiences with like alien encounters and this kind of thing. Have you heard any crossover or anything in that area? I have not heard okay. of any crossover, but I do know uh, several friends and people that have had near-death experiences. Um uh, one of my dear close friends literally died for five minutes and came back and was perfect. 
uh, no brain damage. Uh, well, sometimes I tease them and say, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're God a did, little bit, you know, God just didn't bring bit. you back a hundred percent. He left a little bit for fun. That's right. So, that's right. So, oh my uh, gosh. But yeah, there were, there's, I've, I've met a lot of people that have had them. Um, and I, uh, it's, it, it's sort of, it's a reset button to get you on the right track. Sometimes it's there right. because you've designed it. Sometimes it's there because you're stagnant and you're not moving forward. Sometimes. I, I agree. Right. And so there's different reasons for different things. And, um, but it's sort of the same as a spiritual awakening, which is what I had at age 26. And then another one in 2014, it's to get you up and into your spiritual self and to become awake and aware and to reconnect to the mind internet across the universe, multidimensional and into other universes and ultimately other super universes. Mm. How's, how's Ooh, them apples? Super, yeah. Oh man, super. We're talking super uh, universes yeah. right now. So, right. wow. So this is super universes. And then we take that and we, we put it with multiple dimensional universes. I don't even know yes. where to begin. So what do you think about the concept of, you know, here we are right now. And then let's say we're only using 10% of our, our soul bang, the other parts, <laughs> Could it be in different dimensions? Could it be in different planets at the same time? Could it be also, you know, in the angelic heavenly realm or whatever you want to call it? Do you feel like that we can operate in multiple dimensions? Have you experienced anything like that or heard uh, of Yes. That? Yes, we definitely can okay. operate in different dimensions. And it there's there's several different things that work with that. So what what I understand is as we as a dualistic race are basically using 33 and a third of our brain capacity, some might be a little more, it's just sort of a number to sort of throw out as we become more and more fully conscious and, and when our brain gets to the full 100%, that means that we have actually had an activation. We are, we are in the throes of ascension and it's interesting. I'm not sure if a lot of people know what uh, Merkaba is, but a lot of the master teachers travel in Merkaba. So it's a. It? I'm gonna spell get, it. I'm gonna get a picture. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Okay. Uh, it's sorry for the misspelling, guys. I'm just that's okay. <laughs> trying to keep up. It's, trying to keep it's, up. It's um, okay. M E R K A B A H. So what mm -hmm. happens is, mm -hmm. is your bottom three chakras and your top three chakras. So there's a pyramid here. Mm -hmm. And then the pyramid down here goes the other way. And those two, when you become fully conscious, move and they uh, intersect over your heart. Okay. And then you have a Merkaba. Now, this Merkaba is now what we would call that looks. I always call it the Star David because I can never remember the real name yeah, for it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, so all of the colors now are all around your heart, the, the rainbow oh. colors of each of the different ones. And then it is surrounded oh. by cherry blossom pink. Okay, so here oh. we go. So now, okay. now we've got seven, eighth chakra, ninth, tenth. So this is the realignment. 11, this is and twelve. Yeah, so, the halo is a twelve. Okay, so the halo isn't that the opening to the um, the other realms, the god cosmic, realm? Yeah, into the cosmic consciousness and all. By the way, in the um, autobiography of an extraterrestrial saga books, in the um, uh, uh, hard covers, um, I have okay. this in one of the books and the flaps so people can uh, oh, see do? it. it yeah, yeah. In, in, because they're in the book in black and white, but in the 
in the hard covers. I think it's mm -hmm. but it might be book two or book three. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay. I, I put them on the inner flaps so people can uh, see see it in color and and get an idea. Plus, there's the charts of the different things, what each of the chakras mean, um, etc. So. So then we so then we have uh, a Merkaba vehicle. So now when we're fully conscious, we can be fully integrated and we can start interacting into other dimensions that our soul is a part of. So let's mm. say oh if our God. soul if it. our let's say if our soul is is let's say if our soul was a star seed that came from the eighth dimension, right? and step down its energy into physicality, Here. then, <laughs> yes, then that soul can go up into the eight dimensions and relearn things to be taught to people here on earth. And a lot of star seeds do that as well. Or, oh, okay. or if, if you are an ancient soul, you can therefore do a soul split. So you can hmm. now have up to seven embodiments. Some could be on the same planet. Some could be uh, on different planets learning hmm. as well. And then, um, and then in Tehran's case, Tehran is a, uh, a soul split of seven, but he, is, he has been granted a different experience so that he could teach people of earth that he is having an experience one body in each super universe wow so oh, people no. can learn about the different super universes right so now there is also a thing for uh um that uh i can't remember the exact name of it but Let's say if a, a created being or an ascended being, because you are now yourself and you're immortal, if you go, I think it was called um, Econs, if okay. you go through 11, 11 cycles of Econs, and it's a span of time, which I don't know what that span of time is, Okay. That that therefore, because, you know, you get kind of bored with being the same person for a very long time, mm -hmm. you could shift up and become a different entity, a different look, a different this, but everyone would still know you for who you were because they identify the soul and not the outer exterior. Okay. So what you're saying, you're saying is allowing us to go to be other species. Absolutely. Well, other species are just another, if we love being human, we'll just pick another human. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we could be a girl, we could be a hermaphrodite, we could be oh, a no. boy, we could be, <laughs> yeah, we could be androgynous, we can be um, whatever we want to experience. Right. So. And, and is that all up to us or do we have, I've always thought we've had a bunch, we have elders and we have a team that helps us we <laughs> like, do. like a board of directors in the celestial area that help us with these decisions. Is that how you see it? Well, we do. We do. Yes. But, but like, like in, in the last one, you, there it's like 11 econs that you have to wait before you can do that. Okay. Um, when your soul gets to an advanced place like Tehran's for instance, he was able through the hierarchy to have this expansion into the other one embodiment in each of the super universes. And then at a certain point, and I think it's in book two or book three, he mm -hmm. learns about these other selves and then they come together to sort of counsel him in his Pleiadian life. Hmm which is very fascinating and interesting because now he's integrated and all he has to do is call them forward with a thought, just like we do with, with anyone on the other side, just mm -hmm. like we do with um, if we have connected with uh, extraterrestrial species or 
if we have connected with things, a lot of people have a lot of experiences on board craft or things of that nature. So, so you can call them forward as well. And, and you have to remember that they are multi dimensional. They are multifaceted. They can be in many places at once. So you are not bothering wow. them. Right. Wow, that's... Unless you're unless you're calling them every day, all day long, and driving them crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, there's Samra again. What does she need? Right, right, right. Um, yeah, you know, they funny. might they might just say, "We're going to give it to you in a download." <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Uh, so so uh, and there's we've got so many questions coming on, and just to finish that thought, um, yeah. uh, about uh, downloads and so forth. So one of the things, uh, and you know, Preston Denton, he'll be in uh, on the show in May. He's also a, yeah. a different different expertise as you, but uh, yeah. he does UFO research, uh, a, a real delight. But he was saying that I asked him about implants, and I'm not actually digressing here, but I asked him about implants, and he said. Oh, they don't need that to track you. He said, they just, they know who you are by your energy. They're multidimensional beings. So they know who we are. We just put the thought, which right. is uh, kind of, that's, uh, that's cool. It's, it's true. But the lower vibrational extraterrestrials put in a tracking device. And we know this because Dr. Roger Lear removed many of them when he was alive and they were these little um, transmitters. They were round like a bead and that they were surrounded with biological material so the body would not attack it and destroy it. And um, I actually have a friend that has one of those tracking devices in his arm mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't want it removed, oh. but he takes a magnet uh -huh. and he goes, and he goes, watch. Like he'll have a magnet here yeah. and he'll, he'll move it up and down his arm. Right? Oh God, that's creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. it moves. Yeah. Oh. So, some people have it in their toes. Some people it was put up into their nose. One, one abductee that I met, they put a big uh, sort of like the eyeball they put a whole round thing behind his eyeballs what? and so that they could see through his eyes, his daily oh, life. That's and, freaky. And he was sent to me uh, right after this experience happened. And he was so freaked out. He pulled his, all his eyelids up and I saw the apparatus around his eyeball. You could see it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, does he, he wants to leave it? No, he wanted it out. He said I would have to go and have it surgically removed. They'd have to pop Jeez. his eyeballs out and oh god, and do yeah. that. Yeah, ooh, ooh. Well, there was yeah. someone I was talking to, and I was doing a reading. I said, "Yeah, you." He was talking on his counter. I said, "Yeah, you got a something in your ear there on the right side." He goes, "Yeah, it feels like a yeah, it's like a little round bead." So yeah. they tagged him in his ear like it a is. dog. It is, it is. And then the more advanced ones is. Um, they can keep track of star seeds simply. Every mm -hmm. star seed is on a blue beam, and that blue beam is sensitive to emotion that alerts the biological supercomputer that if something is wrong or something in their life or something that is going on with them medically, it will alert them, and then they can come and help and be of assistance, whether that being is uh, awoke or not. Right. Really? Because you're yes. the, these ships, a lot of them in your book, they're they're organic, right. how they are they're, they driven. Are, so, yeah. right. so that's and, kind of and, that connection too, and, right? And, and also to just differentiate this, this is not evil AI, right? Okay, good point. This, these good. are good, good, good. these are angelic beings, these are created beings, these are fully conscious beings who work with organic technology that is conscious. It has its own personality, not like Hal. That was a movie, remember, <laughs> right? So, so they, they, can, they can do things a lot quicker uh, and stuff. And, and the I Am Tehran books go way deeper into all of that technology, but also, if you then you understand that if 
the negative malevolent races use AI, they're going to use it for a darker purpose and they're going to put their own alien evil twist on it, which Th these is, guys. there you go, yeah, those these guys. guys. Or possibly yeah. these guys. Or those guys as well. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers, but hey. Right, right. And <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, and again, all races have different intentions and uh, different things of that nature. And, and before we go into a question, let me just explain. The most asked question is, how do you know all this information about all these extraterrestrial races, right? I already so asked you, I know. <laughs> you, you did. So I'm going to give the condensed version for everybody here is I've been in the UFO field for 35 years. I have gone on investigations. I know all the ufologists. I have actually photographed a real extraterrestrial, which I put in the book. It's the very last one called The mm -hmm. Unknown Alien. Um, and, um, but I also know all of the contactee books, the early ones, which were all a lot of human contacts, some were non-human, uh, entities who were also very positive. And, and then there was a few other contactee books that I especially was drawn to, uh, because, um, uh, uh, one of my friends was there when one of the beings uh, became present. And another one is a man is having complete contact with this race and they are actually living here on earth. And he allowed me to put their pictures in the book, the clarions. So, so oh. I went to, so I went to Wendell Stevens collection of 65 books. I didn't use all the books I made. I use my personal Mm -hmm. uh, ones that I really like. These are books that time has forgot, right? Wendell is no longer with us. His daughter, Cece, runs mm -hmm. the website, ufophotoarchives.com. All of the books are there in PDF. You can even buy all of 65 books for a hundred and some bucks, right? Okay. So, so I got permission, uh, from, uh, the publisher and from the other contactees. And then some of the more obscure races, like every ufologist and every person, nobody really knew a lot about the mantis beings, right? Yeah, They're always sort of, sort of in the background or whatever, but everyone has had an experience with one um, and have felt it to be benevolent. So um, I actually found a mantis hybrid and who is living on earth and really what and does that lot, look like uh looks human but very unique Lanky. but very unique um in in a human presentation um and i would say uh so i talked to her and uh got a lot of that information um i talked to an octurian hybrid um, I was best friends with a hybrid for many, many years. She had four different kinds. Her father worked in the military and it was an experiment because they were doing an exchange of DNA. So they, they injected this DNA into the mother's uh, womb, uh, unbeknownst to her, by the way, but the father knew once oh, that she was fertilized and they were checking on her and they took her and injected the egg. So a lot of star seeds, just so everyone knows, when they, for them to have an upgrade, they mm -hmm. are given these genetics while they are still in the womb. Now, I have also heard um, through other hypnotherapists mm -hmm. that they, that some, some uh, star seeds are given this upgrade uh, around the age of five or six as well into their genetic code. So like me, for instance, when I was 10, I, I went into a can, I was sitting in the bathtub. I looked into the nozzle, saw my reflection and I went catatonic and all of my entire soul was pulled out of my body brought into the middle of the universe the universe opened up 
I felt the love and everything inside the universe mm -hmm. for these split moments at age 10, right? That, and seems then, like indie, that seems like a near death. So yeah, close. Exactly. But, oh my then, God. but everything in my head at that time was, who am I? Where did I come from? Where do we all come from? All of those questions went circling in my head. It went like this. It sucked back up. Boom, I'm back in my body. I come to. I ponder the experience. And then I forget about it and I archive it. I never tell my yeah. parents. I never do anything. And then I start to recall all my childhood experiences when I had my major spiritual awakening at age 26. Mm -hmm. Because they come for all star seeds, they come at a young age so that when they present themselves later in life, that there is no fear attached to it. It's a feeling of home, it's a feeling of family. So when I started having interactions with master teachers, during my spiritual awakening through the dream state, through then lucid dream states, and then through astral projection, mm -hmm. I never felt fear. All I felt was unconditional love. And, and I was prepared for two years to get this vessel into a place where I was awake and that I would start writing. Uh, the main master teacher said at the end of two years, I had written a 400 page book of all the experiences. And he said, what would you say if I told you you wrote that book for yourself? And I said, then I learned a lot. And, <laughs> and he said, now it's time to sit down and write the books you came here to write. And I want you to sit down and I want you to write and write and write. Do not stop. Do not edit. Keep writing until you can write no more. I could not type at that time. So everything was uh, handwritten. I did have one of those old IBM Selectrics. That's what I typed on way back when. And I would type it up afterwards. Um, I didn't know what channeling was. I didn't know I was channeling. I didn't know what any of that was. I didn't even know what duality was until they Explain came and duality. Me. Explain so, duality. Explain duality So we're we're living in a dua a dualistic world. So we have the choice between right and wrong. And if we decide okay. we're going to hurt someone vengefully, right? Whether through words or action, we become responsible for that action and are therefore put on the karmic wheel. And then whether if this plays out back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it escalates into some horrible outcome is up to the people, right? But then when you, so that is working from your ego, but then when you learn about connection, to the, the heart of the universe, to cosmic mm -hmm. consciousness, to source, you realize, okay, I can step back and look at this objectively. And, and I'm not ready to have a conversation with this person yet. I'm going to allow myself a few mm -hmm. days to cool down. I'm going to form my words properly. And then when I feel it's right for not only me, but mm -hmm. also for them, not that it's always about me and what mm -hmm. I need, when you feel it's energetically right for them, and you will have a conversation and look, you're either going to work it out or you're going to go your separate ways, but you did it with class and integrity. And that's how the fully conscious people do it as well right? Because they understand feelings. They are so kind and giving towards everyone's feelings. If they see somebody is feeling down, just walking wherever they are, if they're in a, in a craft or on a planet, whoever is around will go to that person and mentor them until they are feeling better. 
whether it's through words, hugging, talking. I am not kidding you. It will put you into such a state of blissful tears. Um, and I've seen it. And I've seen them do that for me. And I've seen them show me how they've done it for others. And that is how their world is set up. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. And I don't have a, we have so many questions coming in and I want to sure. ask you, I know we've got five minutes, but I'm cool with going longer if you are. And if you have, if, if everybody, if you want to stay, you're welcome. If you have to, you know, drop out, go eat dinner or something or go to sleep because you're living in South Africa, that's okay. <laughs> but this is so good. I want, I mean, these are getting, I mean, we're going to be able to get some of these really important deep questions answered. So if you're cool sure. for a little bit longer than yeah, absolutely. Sharing, sharing this with people, I, I'm, I'm incredibly appreciative. So, um, uh, gosh, there's so many questions that are coming in. Um, so these people that you're talking about, the higher levels and higher dimensions and the the um, super universes, which are more universes that we don't know about, could some of these be considered these higher level, just loving, pure light, these loving things? And you've got to get the book, guys, that he's got. It's it's amazing. And all that will be down below. But um, could they be considered angels to some people if they were to see them some of these not all but well there there there's a whole angelic class yes so for instance in um uh the stranger at the pentagon story which i made the short film and knew the author for yes, the last eight years of his, uh, last eight years of his life the universal emissary that came his name was valiant thor and he spent three years at the Pentagon to mentor uh, President Eisenhower on the ways of the universe and, and with, with a protocol of how to eliminate sickness, disease, how to prolong life, talk to them about atomics and talk to them about free energy and how they were polluting the planet, et cetera. So he would be considered in the class of seraphim got it so they like he when you see his picture it's on uh, my website stranger at the pentagon.com you can watch a short film there as well and and get all of dr frank's books there under buy books and dvd i have all of the remaining copies that uh that are left uh from the publisher that you can't get anywhere else um unless they're used these are new ver uh copies um, uh, there's a photograph of Valiant Thor there, and you will see the perfect symmetry of his face. That when you are in your soul perfection body, you will see how everyone is perfect. And, uh, and I have one gift that I don't know why I have it, but this gift is, is in my dreams, I see people that have either passed on or people who are living on earth, who are my friends. I see what they look like in their soul perfection body, including oh. myself, including myself. Really? Yeah. So how do you I mean, is it, you know, just beings of light or do you see them in a certain no, way? Or are they you're, you're still, you're going to still look similar to the way you do. Mm -hmm but like 10 to 20 times better. And if you wanted that skinny body, that whatever you, you just, it's all in the mind. You just create whatever you want. You know, me, I've always wanted to be about six foot two, six foot three, lanky. That's my soul perfection body, right? That's what mine looks like. Right. Instead of five, nine it. and short. And <laughs> so it, so really, it's kind of what I've, I've what people describe when they've crossed over. They pick their yes. their That's etheric right. body. So you're That's like, right. you know, I kind of like this. You know, I just want, you know, a little younger, a right. little taller. I'm cool with all yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, of course, a little tan would be nice. Uh, That's but, right. but they do. They pick and they say, so, what is it that Emmanuel Swedenborg said? Because uh, he's, you know wrote about angels and channeled all that. That's, I don't want to go too far off topic, but he said that sometimes that the husbands would not recognize the wives. I guess the wives really did an overhaul, but you're right, saying right. Your, your, your glorified body. Glorified. Absolutely. I, I call it really? a soul perfection body. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah you know, it's amazing. 
It's funny. I can see certain things with people that radiate at a higher level. I can literally see them like I do when people that I've seen, um, I guess, in that uh, you know, people that have crossed over a bit in the heavenly states, they're glowy and they're glowy. Mm -hmm. You glow to me. Do I glow? I kind of glow. Don't yeah, I? you glow. You're glowing. You're a glow baby too. I saw that right away. Yeah, I'm a glow baby. <laughs> You're a glow baby. So is me. Oh, oh God. We come up with the funniest thing last time we said, what was it? Cosmic glitter. That was so funny. And we're now right, glow right. babies. So there's another question here. It says here, isn't Queen Elizabeth and her family part of the seraphim? I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that either. I don't follow. Um, I don't follow any of uh, the royal family and all of the conspiracy theories or things like that. So I, I yeah. don't either. Now, there was another question here. I want to make sure I get it by Susan, who asked, um, she want, I'll just go, I'll find it. But she wanted to know about uh, Octarians and where, you know, so maybe like, do you know anything about that? Where did they come from? Um, are they, they're not. I haven't gotten to that in your book. Are they in your book? I haven't gotten to that part. The Octa, yeah, I'm going to pull them up here. Okay. So um, this is a beautiful artist rendering by uh, Light, Light Star. Her, her website is Light Star Creations. And I'm sorry, I can't get it to be perfect there for you guys, but... Uh, you can go there and check. And then I spoke to a wonderful woman named Vivian Chauvet. She is an Octarian hybrid. And her website is healingfromthestars.com. Make sure you go to that because she is okay. awesome. So, so, um, oh, sorry. And I was we, showing, okay. wait a minute. I was showing you okay. Andromedans, not Octarians. Oh, okay. We got to get the right one. Uh, that's Octarian. okay. That's okay. Hold on. We're almost there. And then also the, the Fiona from South Africa did a activation, a DNA activation on me. And that was the one that I got so high. I didn't even know about this. It was so good. It was so good. I can't wait for my next one. So oh, I they're awesome. More. Okay. There we go. That's Octarians. Oh my gosh. They look Egyptian. Yeah. And this is also a uh, light stars artwork. So, um, okay. yeah, so you can go to lightstarcreations.com. Okay. So they're Octarians. They're just from Octurus and, okay. um, yeah. And, uh, you know, now, Mind you, this is one race of Octarians that I'm writing about. There are many, many races, and okay. the, uh, some of them have blue skin. They have all different shades of blue. Some are like that milk, milk white. Some are different. And then if they mate with other races, then other colors come in. It's just the same as we have here on Earth, the way it is mm. everywhere else as well. So... Um, but they're they're beautiful. They are very very highly advanced beings. Um, they are definitely here to help. They are uh, great sound healers. Um, they are just incredible healers. Really? Period. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was first met um, uh, Vivian, she um, uh, I worked with her just to get a activation, Octarian activation. And when she was talking Ooh. to me, she says, now when I'm working on you, um, you're going to go up in your etheric body onto an Octarian craft and that kind of thing. So she's working on me and, and, oh, by the way, she does do light language. So she was doing light language and Octarian language. And then I felt my um, my whole aura start to elevate and oh, escalate. Man. And then all of a sudden my eyes closed and I felt the dimensions go like this. Vroom, 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 vroom. Throbbing like, like the universe, like, like creation. Like, oh, man. Like I was shuffling through them, right? Oh, and then when I opened my eyes, Everything was gold. Even she was gold. And gold is the co color of Father God. And all of a sudden, everything was doing that same shuffling, going boom, 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 boom. And I really, really, um, 
I call it a spiritual burn because you, you've gotten, you got this incredible energy um, activation that just happened and, um, and it helps with your spiritual sustenance. It helps with your growth and uh, all of that. And that probably was around the time that I did have my second spiritual awakening. I only thought that you can have one in your lifetime but and then yeah. i realized wow you can have more than one so right. yeah and give me give me that i'm going to give it to other people i'll put i'll put fiona's um, and give me your other girl because they're different yeah. things so tell me yeah. your lady uh, vivian. vivian chauvet c-h-a-u-v-e-t okay c-h-a-u-v-e-t and it's healing from the stars Actually, I've also got her, if anybody gets the book too, and you forget, I have it in the back of the book under uh, further reading or, okay. or for people uh, oh, under cool. Octarian so that you know where you can go and learn more about the Octarian since she is oh, Octarian fantastic. hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's called what? An Octarian activation or what's it called? Well, I would call it an Octarian activation. Yes. Okay. And it's different than a Pleiadian. <laughs> we are really going. Well, it is God. different, but, but really the, the very extremely evolved races are Arcturian, Andromedan, Syrian, Pleiadian, Ladies. right? That type mm -hmm. of thing. Those are the ones that are most prevalent here. And, and those are the ones that are really here uh, during the star seed. Um, uh, activations and the star seeds being on the planet that keep coming in and out and in and out lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and and then once we get to a certain sector now a lot of star seeds that have that have advanced and become close to fully conscious they're able to now have kids that these kids are able to come in with more soul sustenance Ooh, and cool. so they are brainiacs these kids are coming in, they're drawing star maps, speaking star languages. They, I mean, really? I, I've met many of these star kids and uh, I mean, it's amazing. You, I mean, you are just a wealth of information. My gosh. I mean, this is just a, a, so incredibly fascinating. Why yeah. is it though? Okay. A couple of questions. Let's, let's go around this star seed um, uh, topic here. How does one know, because people have been asking that if they are a star being, are there certain certain things to look for? Because maybe they haven't been activated. And the next question is, why would they be activated? Or how can they? <laughs> well, I think everyone is sort of on their own schedule, right? Like, like, I have a friend that has been very much into the UFO community for a very long time. And, and um, he, for instance, always wanted to know where he was from. He never could figure mm -hmm. it out. I knew where he was from, but I said, look, mm -hmm. this is your journey. You mm -hmm. need to go on that. You need to go on that journey yourself and figure it out. So one night um, after I talked to him, I said, look, just meditate, just keep doing things and, and to see where you're from. And he, um, I don't know, months down the line, I'm talking to him on the phone and I said, well, did you ever figure out where you're from? And he goes, you know, Craig, no, I never have. Um, and it's just pondering. And I said, well, what are you doing right now? And he goes, oh, I've been on the computer uh, researching the Pleiades for about three hours. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and I said, <clears throat> there you go. That's where you're from. Right. So um, and he did have experience with with human ETs that also helped to activate him and that type of thing as well. So so the Starseed program, which which begins in the autobiography of an extraterrestrial saga book series in the first book with I am Tehran and it, and, it, and it moves on and we learn about it more and more in all four books. Okay. Uh, there'll be seven, yeah, there'll be seven books in total. That's Tehran on the cover, big seven foot seven Pleiadian man. Wow. Now, now he is born, he is the first born and he is born, strangely enough, dualistic. 
And in the fully conscious community, every 200,000 births, there is a soul born dualistic. And this is so the fully conscious beings will be uh, able to understand what it is like to interact with dualistic beings and for these dualistic beings to understand what it is like to work with fully conscious beings, right? So uh, he is he is brought up and he goes through many, many, many things. And then he is given the assignment to teach star seeds at the University of Melchizedek coming into earth from all over this universe, other universes as well. He not only teaches them about uh, what du du uh, duality is, but he teaches them what to expect, what sector of the earth they're going to go into, what their parents look like, what their family is gonna look like, how long they're gonna live, what period of time they have to learn to reach a certain state of consciousness, and that they're on a timeline. And all of this is sort of bred into their soul makeup before their incarnation, right? So um, so he also teaches, um, so uh, he also teaches the mighty messengers who come in with a planetary teaching program that are star seeds and go out to the masses. So, but mm -hmm. the difference between a messenger and a mighty messenger is the mighty messengers have already been every race, religion, creed on earth. They have filled their, their soul with every shoe and they know everybody, how every race and every person feels and what their inner makeup is. So when they're doing their when they become a mighty messenger much later on, then they understand they understand how everyone is feeling and uh, and then they therefore teach from that compassionate uh, thing. So it's interesting that they Tehran has chosen to do this because he is dualistic. But along his journey, he learns how to become fully conscious. So we, the reader, as we're reading through the books, we learn how to become fully conscious as well. You, and also, if it's anything right. like, if it's like your uh, your newest book, I mean, it the words were coming off the page in like different dimensions. They were, yes, it they was do. changing me. It was doing something. I'm like, what is this? It wasn't yeah. just like, oh, it makes me think about something. It was something else going on. So yeah. this, it's, uh, it's like infused uh, with uh, some kind of living. I, I, I don't know, but that's what I'm sure it's these a, are even more yeah. so. It's a, it's an energy. A lot of people told me when they were reading it, they felt the words lift off, lift mm -hmm. up off the page, and they felt that they were understanding things on a much different level. Like you. Yeah. You could read uh, the I Am Tehran book one week, put it down, and one year later, go back to it, and you will see a whole nother dimension to it. And you can do that throughout your whole life wow. and get new things from it. I do still if I pick right. it up and read through it. So, that this and now question the mighty messenger, how is that different than a master teacher? Well, a master teacher is a mighty messenger. Okay. And, but, okay but the master teachers are universal master teachers some of them will will take some of their energy and use for an incarnation cycle as well and it is up to them to either reintegrate that energy back into their soul or if that part of their soul that is incarnated does so well and wants to continue upon its own evolution, it can do that as well. Isn't that interesting? That is. I mean, this, this yeah. is just, this is, this, yeah. I mean, it is, guys, I'm just telling you, this is so good. Yeah. I mean, Craig is such a fine, I mean, such a, a, yeah. a wealth of information. Now, um, okay, we're back to star seeds. I know that's just a general term, but we've sure. got another question 
by Susan. Can you tell where someone is from just by looking at their energy? And I think you kind of answered that from the guy you already knew, but you didn't want to give it away. You wanted him to kind of come into that. It's really interesting. Sometimes if I walk up to somebody, I will just know. Mm -hmm. Other times I don't get anything. And I figure if I don't get anything, even if they ask, it's because either they're not ready or they're supposed yeah. to discover it on their own. Right. Right. That makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, you, it, and, and much like the higher level beings, you, you, um, people have to go through their own journey. They're not going to intervene. I will tell you, every master teacher I have worked with has never said this is how it's done. They have never said anything. It's all done through um, telepathic thought, through downloads, through imagery. And then you take that and you formulate it and you say to yourself, oh, um, I see because everybody is in, has got their own level of learning. But even as you um, continue to increase your spiritual energy, you start to see things differently all the time. Everything just keeps rearranging itself and that kind of thing. Now, yes, they, they will share rules and things like that with you and that type of things or, or um, things that have to do with the crafts and and that type of thing. And I usually have one guide from Melchizedek that will uh, be my guide and share those things on each project. Wow. So we're yeah. really talking about astral traveling, channeling is what we're talking yeah. about. But, you know, look, it, that's a big word. We're all connected. And it just depends if we remove the fear and just go, hey, things are bigger than we thought and really be in a presence of love because this is what this is a higher level thing that you're really talking about. Yes. About the universe. So um, now the you're talking about the Starseed program. I wanted to ask about that as well. And part of that Starseed, you said the higher level beings are the Pleiadians or the Octurians or um, what were the others? You said a couple others. Andromedans, Syrians, Andromedans. Syrians for sure. I mean, it goes back. There's Lyrans mm -hmm. and Vagans and uh, these are all the human classes mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. I'm also talking about. But also in these solar systems, there's other beings that are non-human entities that are also fully conscious and, and quite aware. There are even reptilian races that are fully conscious and aware and have beautiful souls with great personalities. Uh, there are also grays as well that are that are good and and there are also humans that are bad in certain yeah. sections and sectors and things like that and and if we really look at it honestly the universe makes everything light and dark and, duality. and mm -hmm. it do it's duality and we're each learning from each other playing whatever roles we're playing and whichever characters we've been born into. And then next time, maybe somebody else is playing the dark character and that dark character is playing the light character or, or something of that nature, because everything has to balance out in the soul because you cannot elevate into the next dimension until you have fully understood your whole spiritual energy, the, the, the uh, difference uh, between thought, right? That that your thoughts are powerful. That you, yes. it's the it's the trinity. It's the triangle. You you have a thought. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You think on that thought, and you have the power to create or destroy that thought. Yes. And then yeah. if you create it here then it has been put into the universe, whether it is positive or negative, and you are responsible for that thought and for its creation. You see, right. so that yeah. in that yeah. simple terminology mm -hmm. comes from the world of the great I am as well. Absolutely. Because, I got, oh, I've, have you ever listened to that channel? I am the, 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 this tape series. I am. I I have not, but oh I, yeah, but um, the yeah the Maramayams who are in the ET almanac, they are also a part of the Taram book. They were some of the master teachers that came to me to wake me up 
right from the very yeah. beginning as well. So, so At I 26. learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot about the great I am and the teachings and uh, all of that. So all of that are, yeah. is in uh, the Tehran books and a little bit about them in the E.T. Almanac. And I love how you're doing the teachings through entertainment, but you're also teaching. And when yes. people are reading this, there's something that it, they're remembering and they're being, they're waking up, right. which we need to wake up and look right. at our real, and look at our real history. So um, getting, so I want to ask you about the, the star seed program. Is it really about activating and waking people up? So they remember, is that what it is? Well, it's about remembering, but the main thing is, is once you remember, you therefore become, you crave spirituality, you crave wanting to know about the universe, and you start gobbling up all kinds of books, you start going mm -hmm. to conventions, you start meeting with other people of a like mind, your mind starts creating all these things and you want to know. And when you expand your awareness, you're expanding your soul, you're expanding your spiritual sustenance. And then you start, and if you are a person that has never really worked on their soul or understood it, you will therefore want to know how to do that so that you can start <laughs> applying that learning and those lessons into your life to remove your karmic patterns and to remove any karma that you have so that you can therefore become uh, more greatly aware. You can increase your sustenance and keep moving up higher and higher and higher. And then the beings that are working with you can teach you more and more the more open you become through your own devout work on yourself. Wow, this is great. I mean, I think, you know, your books are a great way to start to get, you know, the saga because it's, I mean, even the the latest one, uh, the Extraterrestrial Species Almanac, it, that's, that is so fast. It's fun, but it's just fascinating yeah. about the abilities of what they can do. And then also, like you were saying, some of your uh, contacts here that you were saying, the uh, Healing from the Stars or or the Portal of Aca Academy. There are other people that can do this. But I, I will tell you, just because right. I, I met you, I was like, thanks, Craig. <laughs> I met you. I thought, what a lovely person. And my whole life has changed two weeks. And now <laughs> I remember all these, like, <laughs> apparently I've had yeah. an encounter too. Like, who knew? So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. be careful what you ask for, but it's all good. I mean, it's exciting. It's just, you know, uh, I guess I'm looking at now how I, my world view has shift, shifted. Right to now I'm looking at things completely different from a different perspective, which is honestly really freeing, really it freeing. Is, it is really freeing, but then you understand that the one thing that you can do <clears throat> to help the earth is to spiritually grow. Because as you grow, that means that all of the riffraff and all of the things that are being done on this planet, and boy, there's a lot of negative stuff going on now, all of that will slowly dissipate. Also, the malevolent extraterrestrials that are on the planet, when the planet gets to a point of tipping into becoming fully conscious, they can no longer stand the vibration and they will leave of their own accord. Okay. Oh my God. That's the answer. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, I was wondering how, how we can get rid of these, right. these demons and these creepy low yeah. intention people. Oh my God. That's how you people, do it. Oh my God. They're, right. I got it. Uh, they don't want to be around us. The vibration so high, which is why right. they don't like the angelic realms because everybody's happy. <laughs> right. It's okay. <all> right. <laughs> They're like, ooh, right. don't want to be around that. Okay. So that's why as we grow and we we uh, keep moving forward, they just and we're you know naturally just unfold into a universe of love. They just like these these creepy low level entities or people or whoever they right. are. Then they just say, hey. This is too high vibration for me. I'm out of here. Well, and also they will stay in the lower astral realms because mm -hmm. that's that's where their that's where right. their consciousness is. So right. when when we move into the fourth dimension and as we move up, 
we move closer to the sun, we become uh, less and less dense in each dimension, right? We will still have the feel of touch and everything in the next okay. experience and forth um, as well, that sensation. Um, it's not gonna be exactly like here, it's a mm -hmm. little different. And, uh, but uh, what what's gonna happen is when we're there, we're gonna no longer be uh, have to uh, deal with these lower vibrationals because they're not gonna be able to enter that fourth dimension, you see. Yeah. So they are mm -hmm. here because we're in, in a dualistic 3D world here, right? right? Yeah. So I know that, and tell us the good news. And I want to also talk about if you need protection, <laughs> get this <laughs> on Craig's website because he had this channeled and you said that you yeah. were working on a case that was really nasty with. Uh, well, um, well, I, 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 well, strangely enough, when I, uh, was creating the book um my master teachers wanted me to create some of the bad guys mm -hmm. and i i of course did not want to have the artists create them and they said no you have to give equal opportunity and i said but i don't want anyone using those their pictures for uh bad practices Right. Oh, okay. And so then I got the download to create the universal seal of protection. And mm -hmm. therefore I put it on all their pictures. So that could, well, the only thing that could ever be evoked from those photographs is love and light, even if it's mm -hmm. removed. Right. So then when lots of people started having poltergeist or demonic activity or bad extraterrestrial abductions, mm -hmm. I started sending them the cards right. and everything ceased immediately wow. because you were, this is Archangel Michael, the Arch Archangel Metatron and Father Melchizedek. Any entity does not want to look into the face of the universe, right? Into the power of how the universe works through their living light programs that help all of us. So it's the same, I, I, I equate it like this. When there is a, let's say, um, a demon soul, right? That wants to wreak havoc on someone and you show them this, or it's a bad yeah. spirit, and you show them that card, they have to face their light and they that tunnel will open and they don't want to look into that tunnel because if they go back into the light, they have to then be accountable for all of the oh, horrible things they've God. done. So that's why we have all these people stuck on this side. And when you watch all of the shows, the paranormal shows, they're like, yeah. well, you know, these five yeah. souls have been stuck here and, you know, now they're ready to go, but they don't know how to go. So mm -hmm. somebody activates a tunnel and they're able to go back in and do and and then they they go back in and they have their life review and they do all of that because remember the life review yeah. is about yeah. you experiencing what everybody else felt mm -hmm. about what you did to them right. and that's your living in heaven or hell right no i got that so that makes sense yeah. so what i look when which you know i don't like necessarily like doing this but sometimes it's the proper thing to do that's that's kind that i've helped what do you call it? Lost souls. People go, why are they lost? Well, people are lost here. You know, they're confused and some people don't want to cross over and some are just nasty, but I will uh, create uh, this beautiful portal and it's this beautiful white and then it's gold. And then I have the, the angels and then I start showing them what it's like on the other side. And, but they have to be ready because if they're not, they get really nasty and they can get physical. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then so, but when they're ready, I just like kind of, you know, if they're ready, I'm like, look, I don't want any problems. I'm just here to assist. They're much nicer than I am. <laughs> I'm not playing around. Here it is. And it's, you'll be met with love, but it's your journey. And so uh, it's like, it's always available to them, but you're right. That makes sense while we have the demonic thing in the lower realm, because they, 
they're they've done nasty things. They don't want to face the the responsibility of what they've done, which is much like people here that are mean. Right. That's they, right. They blame other so, people. That's absolutely right. I'll all my friends have their universal so they have one in the car. I have a friend that drives around for a living. He says he sees street people with all kinds of entities on them and they start to approach his car. He says, I grab that card You're and like, I hold it up. Go away. And he says, and they run away immediately. You know, that kind um, of thing. Um, I myself, mm -hmm. I keep one between my mattresses faced up where my head lies. Oh my gosh. That's right. A great idea. So Thank that it's you. there for Ooh. when you're sleeping. I keep one in every single room. I take a picture mm -hmm. of it and I use it as my cell phone mm -hmm. uh, front. All my friends right. do that as well. So therefore, it's with you at all times. Yeah, right. And, yeah. Wow. So. Wow. You know, this, this is, this all makes so much sense. There's an order to things. So you're saying we're going to yeah. get past all this negativity on this. We are this definitely, thing? definitely. I mean, it's, it's just the strangest thing ever since I began. I, I just know this planet is going to go through what it's going to go through, but then mm -hmm. it's going to go into being fully conscious and the light reintegrate with universal society and everything. It's going to be a peaceful planet. Once more, there is so much angelic concentration, the galactarian alignment of space peoples and planets are here in drones. There are really? giant craft. There is so much going on. Plus, we have the Agarthans below that live below the earth that are also right. a part that also work in the Starseed program and also want the surface to also um, uh, become awake and aware because then both cultures can reintegrate. Wow. Right? So, so they are, so they, we have these, well, it's, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's been a lot of UFO sightings and it's like they're not even being, you know, especially careful. I think I was telling you it was a month ago and there was like a fleet or whatever, 12 of them. There were UFOs that, I mean, you, they, they were in that a strange pattern and just like, you know, five minutes from me, but they're all over the place. They show up all the time yeah. with people. Yeah. And, and, they do. Uh, and they're not even hiding it. They're not even like, Oh, they're like, here we are. Okay. Bye. Why is that? I mean, they, they're not, they don't they're, even seem to care. They're, well, they're there. Well, they're not going to come down and say we're here or anything like that because, <laughs> because we're, we're living down here. They don't want to cause any fear. They don't want to do anything like that. So the mm -hmm. Starseed program brings a lot of a, awareness of who they are through all of the Starseeds and through a lot of the ufologists and the people that study this, everything is available. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is go look. You could see a million things of proof of all the stuff that ufologists and everyone has brought forward about it, right? And um, and the thing is, is that we are definitely moving in and towards that, but they are here in the capacity of star seeds raising our consciousness so that when we match theirs we will reintegrate with them on a physical level there are many contactees that are already in contact with them on a physical level and and going uh, taking on their craft and taking a little spin around the universe and things of that nature many of the early contactees were they were taken and uh, et cetera. So, um, and so it's, it's available. That's why a lot of the things that I wanted to do in the ET Almanac was go back to a lot of those early contacting right. cases because these were races that time forgot. Really? In right? what way? Well, mm -hmm. there's Clermers, Kaldashians, there's Itapurans, there's Regalians, there's all of these yeah, different... Here's, here's a couple, here's the... Yeah, that's the, those are digital immortals. Those are, oh my God, those are like, those are like the brainiacs. Uh, you said that, they're like the advanced datas. They are the advanced <laughs> datas. They are actually beings that no longer have a body. They're more solar. 
but they wanted to experience a physical body once more. So oh. they, they, a thousand of them petitioned um, the uh, angelic core and they decided um, to use the, uh, um, they're called uh, soul vector suits. And so these soul vector suits are temporary bodies that are created for people traveling to other worlds or let's say if a if a ambassador from a human ambassador was traveling to an ex, another an alien world where they look different and they preferred to see their own kind that ambassador would therefore move his energy into a soul vector suit that would look like them that's crazy and that's not really shape shifting it's something it's else not, right no it's not shape shifting at all. Okay. but there there are you know, there are people that can do that with their glands. And we know that through right. um, creatures on earth that are able right. to uh, do things like that. So it's true. Uh, yeah. And um, by the way, that is where we learn everything about creation is all we have to do is look at all the life on our planet and we know that it will exist in some other way, shape or form out in the universe, or that that, that extraterrestrial race took that DNA from that species and spliced it into their own to be able to do that as well, because okay, so, they're genetic masters. So I've got a question, it's crazy, but people will like this. So I, I, I won't, I don't actually remember the person's name, I don't really know, but I was watching TV, flipping the channel, and watching it for a second uh, with my husband, I was like, oh, my God, they just changed their eyes. And he goes, what? And I'm like, stop it. And I took several pictures and it literally changed. And right. this is two different people. I mean, this is really clear. And one was a complete horizontal and the other one was fine. Another one went from it, he was getting pissed because the guy interviewed him. <laughs> and so he went from uh, a, like a gray green to black and then he went and then I could see one of those again so the to me the black was like the uh, I just thought it must be a hood and then coming down but is are they the freaking reptilians because I got really clear shots that was I mean it was totally you can't make that up well we we do know that there are a lot of humans that are in a lower vibration that the reptilians and other malevolent beings, yeah. including humans, mm -hmm. can therefore influence them. They can, if that person decides to degenerate, especially if they're doing drugs and smoking and lots of alcohol, they can therefore start um, uh, bringing on more and more entities and make it stronger, right? So they can okay. get, they can get a, they can get 190, 200, they can get Whoa. a ton of entities on them over time, which therefore oh. that person is lost and it's just yeah. those entities controlling it. So when oh, you really, so when you really see a crazy murderer, serial yeah. killers, things oh, like yeah. that, yeah. and like you see that there is something wrong with them. When you look at yeah. them, you say oh, they yeah. are definitely demonic influence, like Richard Ramirez, yes. the hill right. that was he the hillside strangler, yeah. I think. Yeah. Or the when Mendez you, brothers that killed right, their parents. Right. You look at that and you say there was so I could see the entities on them. Right. Yeah. And and therefore they're no longer being controlled by that. But that. Yeah, they're not right. controlled anymore. But they always say a voice told me to do it. Yeah. And they, and especially right. the Mendez brothers, they both agreed to the same. Did they go crazy and hear the same things? Cause they heard right, right, the same right. thing. So that's not possible right. unless it's something else. Unless it's something else. And the other thing is, and then a lot of people say, well, why? Yeah. Well, because we're living in duality and the dark mm -hmm. beings want to do everything to defile God to defile the light, to defile the righteous, because they felt in their prior lifetimes they were given a bad deal. They never confronted mm -hmm. their own demons to rise out of that mm -hmm. and become 
a person of the light, they just kept going dark of their own uh, choice. Down, 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 so, down, down. That's right. So so that is how just that the game. is. And they just do the game. they do conglomerate in areas and they will start to form and things of that nature. And so, they will take on their own beingness together. Yes. You know, and and like nasty. I said. If, yeah, if, if, right here. If I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> right here. If right I here. see or feel anything <laughs> negative, I put that card there. If oh, I'm at man. a friend's house, I'm like, mm -hmm. put this card on. You know, even if you tape it on your wall, I don't, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, we don't want to play that game. And nope. you know, the, and you know, the thing is, simple things I tell people that have you know hauntings or things going on. I said, you know what, you can. I would play music with, or, you know, praising God, you know, praising God music. I said, they can't stand that because they don't like this right, happy. Right. And they'd like, That's you right. know, love the Lord and God. And they're like, yeah. Ooh, I hate this. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I, and I always say, uh, whatever your belief system is, yeah, have a picture of that master teacher, whether it's Jesus, right. Buddha, Muhammad, Archangel Michael, mm -hmm. um, you know, who is the protector, that kind right. of thing. Even in the original exorcist case of mm -hmm. the little boy, not Linda Blair, but it was based yeah. on, a, on a boy. Right. It was Archangel Michael who came to take the demons out of him. Oh, yeah. Right? He, he, oh, yeah. That's right. I've That's got a right. big statue of him. I got a big one of Metatron. Yeah. I got a big one of Gabriel. Yeah. I mean, it really, my house is not creepy. It's really nice. It's not done creepy. Okay, but I've yeah. got angels everywhere. Yeah, I angels love angels. Too. Oh, I got them. Yeah. I love Michael when he shows up with yeah. that big sword. But I like yeah. it because to me, it's got this purple flame. And I'm like, um, he's just, he just doesn't play. It's just wonderful. His presence is so powerful. I just, I just yeah. love him. We we just, um, uh, by the way, I'm making the E.T. Almanac document, uh, book into a documentary right now. Are and you I'm serious? bringing yes, and I'm bringing all the artwork to life. And we just animated uh, Father Melchizedek and Archangel Michael, <gasps> where they are moving and blinking and and uh, all kinds of stuff. We're bringing everything to life through different types of CGI in the documentary it'll probably be out next year sometime really so, okay yeah. so so please let us know when that comes out of oh course, i will i will of course for you're, sure. you're welcome to come back i mean this channel has only been around seven months and it's like booming so by then we'll probably yes. have two hundred thousand subscribers <laughs> and move off. so uh but yeah this is uh because you know we need a safe platform where people can talk about these spiritual things Absolutely. And kind of get spiritually fed with, you know, no judgment and have beautiful, uh, interesting people like you and to fill in the gaps with things that we don't know to open our eyes. So you've got to get the book, get the book, The Extraterrestrial yes. Species Almanac. It's so much more deeper than you can imagine. And also, well, I'm going to have the link where they can purchase that because that way they can get you uh, to personalize it. Yes. And to sign I love it and get that. it back to them. And that would be autobiography of an ET. Dot com. Dot com. And then you click on other books for the ET Almanac. And then okay. you scroll down to the bottom of the page for the Universal Seals. And on the uh, home page is where you can get uh, all four books of the autobiography of an extraterrestrial saga. You can buy you can buy them uh, separately or there's a one click button for hardcover or soft cover as well. And I sign them all for everyone. I so enjoy doing that because oh, yes. that's that's my mission is to be a writer, a filmmaker, and bring this wonderful information mm -hmm. into the world. Wow. And and uh, somebody brought to my attention if, uh, a year after I made Stranger at the Pentagon, and they said, "Do you realize you're the first person to ever make a movie about an extraterrestrial case?" And I went, oh wow, yeah, from from wow. the from the contactees. I mean, we had Betty and Barney Hill, and that, a movie like that was made, you know, I think in the '80s with uh, James Earl Jones and Estelle Parsons. But yeah. that was of an abduction, but not of a real contactee case with a being who came here to help the world, right? Yeah. 
Wow. And you've got the trailer when they go to the to the website so they can see the trailer. Yeah. I, I, yes. You know what? We've been so busy. We didn't have time to see the trailer, but the trailers, all your trailers are really good. Are good. I mean, they're, yeah. They're really good. They should yeah, be because if you're in the entertainment business. Yeah, but that's right. They, they should be. I mean, I love everything you're doing. I, you know, sing your praises. I think that getting this information out and it's also you do it in such a fun, fascinating way. You just take, I mean, uh, I love how the message is about love and not fear. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. um, and, and you really, what you're doing is big stuff. I'm just so proud of you. I mean, I just think it's amazing. Well, thank you. I mean, that's the way I was taught. It was all taught through love. And I always shared it with my family and friends. And uh, I used to have big UFO parties and they, they would grow when I had a one bedroom apartment, they would grow to like a hundred and some people. I fed everybody. I would make big oh vats of spaghetti <laughs> and people would be sitting like this, like, you know, cause I bring a ufologist over and, and back then we had VCRs and they pop in the latest uh, UFOs from around the world. And, um, and then I would share my stories about what was going on and and that type of thing. And yeah. I've continued to share my stories because I think it's very important for people to know because everybody is always having some kind of experience. Yes. And then because I have shared first, then people share with me mm -hmm. and my family and friends started sharing and, and people now, especially with all my books that are out, they will write me and, and tell me, or uh, a, a lot of people wrote me and said, oh my God, when I read the word Pleiades in your book, I just yeah. started weeping and weeping. And, and I'm like, yep, there's, there's your home. Because when I heard it the first time, when I was about 26, I sobbed and sobbed and I didn't know why I was sobbing. And then I was just like, oh, this is, I didn't even know what Pleiades was. But I heard it and it activated something in me and it just started crying. Oh, wow. So I was like, well, then that's where my soul is from. And mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, throughout throughout all of my journey, uh, of course, I uh, got the confirmations and things on that. So um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's an uh, it's an amazing journey. All the Tehran books, too, because I saw yes. everything in full vivid. Living Technicolor, they're all illustrated. Mm -hmm. I paid a lot of money to get them illustrated. There's over 80 illustrations in each book of the. I didn't know that. Yeah, of the ETs, of their home worlds, they're inside their spaceships, outside their spaceships, everything. I wanted, I wanted everyone to have a real visual. Wow. Yeah. You, I tell you what. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am just going to eat this stuff up because I, I had no idea. I haven't even gotten into those yet. So now that you've told yeah. me I can't stand it, I'm going to jump yeah. right in there because it's not just reading it. It's actually when you're, it's, it's remembering. It's remembering, but, uh, for all readers, including yourself, go to the back of the book first and read the okay. terminology of the extraterrestrial okay. world, good. because okay, therefore point. you'll understand what everything means when it comes up. And if you can't remember, you'll know you can go back and reference it so that you can get great. a greater understanding of what a particular name or word means in their society. Wow, that's that's phenomenal. I didn't know you had a gloss or, or a definition section yeah. in the back. Yeah. So, wow. So, I, I mean, I can't thank you enough. This is amazing. Uh, I'm sure I'll have more questions and some more star seeds show up here. We'll just come this back. Is, we'll just oh come back. Oh my gosh. I know. And whatever you're doing, I mean, I'll just, you know, support you because this is this oh, is great. Thank you. We're, I mean, this is wonderful. And everybody get your own signed copy at the autobiography of an ET and then also your cards here for protection. There we go. Yeah, I love That's a heart right. too. It's so nice. Yeah, me too. So uh you have been awesome. I thank you so much, Craig. And I'm going to um uh put here um your intro slide and thank everybody for being and you for staying a little longer when it's a Friday yes. night. Uh That's you know, right. and here you're you're teaching the world and sharing your wisdom and and uh, when you could be, you know, doing something else on a Friday night. So I thank you from my heart to yours. Thank I appreciate you. That. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me on. Blessings. Blessings to you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.